Okay, good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, people around the world here. Welcome to this uh, Google Summer of Code office hours uh, of today, uh, March the 30th. So welcome everybody on the meeting and listening to the recording. So we're slowly reaching, no, we're not slowly, we're very rapidly reaching the end uh, of uh, this phase of Google Summer of Code. So uh, we're uh, reaching the end of the proposal submission uh, part. So just give a quick update where we're standing. So we have a total of 34, 34 uh, drafts that were submitted for review. From those 34, eight drafts had to be uh, withdrawn or discarded because they were on uh, the three withdrawn projects. So a lot of word work had to be put back either in the fridge or uh, put aside and people uh, realigned. Um, apart from Chris Stern, uh, I think we as a community, as a mentor community, made a terrible job in reviewing and advising on all these uh, drafts. Uh, I apologize for, for that. Uh, it, the, the, we're still not the end uh, of the draft uh, period. Now, the reason for that is that uh, we have about three times as many proposals or drafts uh, than we had last year. And we have exactly the same amount of mentors uh, uh, for that. So uh, we've been overwhelmed by the questions on Gitter and the very active traffic over there, the different documents to, uh, uh, to review. So we will definitely improve uh, uh, that and make it better. I thank you for your patience. Uh, all. 16 proposals have already been submitted on the GSOC portal. Uh, some names and drafts I recognize, some are coming out of the blue. The ones coming from out, from out the blue, uh, they need to be very, very good. So uh, proposing the draft, make it available and have it discussed by the community is the way to go in order to uh, succeed. It is now time, and I'm talking to uh, the would-be contributors, it is now time to submit uh, your proposal. Don't procrastinate, don't, you can expect some reviews, I, I a Mark, uh, I think you want to give it a push. I I'm wanting to make a push of it since the beginning of the week, but uh, been busy with other things. Yeah. For Sunday evening, uh, I think there there will be no reviews anymore by mentors. So uh, because the deadline is for Tuesday. Yeah. So well. The, the Google Summer of Code rules allow them to submit and then overwrite their submission with a later submission, right? So there's yes. there's no harm in then submitting early. And then if they get additional feedback and decide to react on it, they can replace their submission with an Im improved submission. So yeah. there's no shame in that. And that means um, submit, and then you can submit and replace your PDF with another PDF that's a better one. That's That's perfectly fine. Okay, but yeah. then what would be the source of truth? The Google document that they shared no, in the no, first place? No, no, and, no, no, and, no. It's... And the Google Doc is never the source of truth to us as reviewers. We always use the PDF file, right? Their, their submitted PDF is the thing that we have to use. Yeah. That's the rule that and Google it's gives. it's frozen. Right. And it's the only one we use for grading. Good question. Uh, the deadline, remember, is Tuesday, uh, April 4th. Uh, at 1800 UTC that this is uh, midnight in Asia or India, using India as a reference. Uh, it's the evening uh, in Europe and uh, somewhere about the morning uh, in, in the US. 
uh, with all the work that has been done, don't let it slip. Submit in, as uh, Mark uh, reminded, uh, you can submit and then have a last last minute change, uh, uh, but at least it's already uh, submitted. Yeah. And John Mark, just for absolute precision, 1800 UTC is 1130 PM India Standard Time. Correct. Uh, the yeah, continent, above. the subcontinent uses a single single time zone for whole subcontinent. And I like that a lot. Very smart of them. Very clever. Yeah. Uh, during, so once the, the proposals are submitted and frozen, this is where the mentors will start grading in making the sele selection. So contributors or would-be contributors can then rest a little bit and think and, and do other things. We will keep the office hour open. So I will open the channel. It will not be recorded. I'll just keep it as a, a social hangout. If people want to chat or discuss, uh, uh, Indian people can try to explain me the rules of cricket. I'm more than eager to learn them, <laughs> but we just to be together and the channel will be open. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not required at all uh, to attend. Um, the jury will come out uh, on Thursday, May 4th at the same time. So 1800 UTC, 11.30 PM in India, so about midnight. Uh, and the results will be announced uh, Urbi et Orbi, which means in Latin, uh, to the city and the world. So it will be announced by mail, by Google, to the people that will, will have been selected. Uh, we'll also publish exactly at that time a Jenkins blog post, and we'll update the, the project pages with the selected projects, and there will be also announcement uh, on social media. Twitter and LinkedIn. So this is the official uh, announcement where the people selected will be. We will hold a special office hours the Friday, just after that. So Friday, uh, May 5th at 1500 UTC, usual time, but just shifted by one day, uh, where we'll meet, we'll, we'll congratulate the selected uh, Google Summer of Code uh, contributors will will answer questions, uh, maybe give suggestion to the people that were not selected, uh, because there there are still things in, interesting and important things that they can do uh, to learn from the experience, uh, contribute to the community. There are a lot of very exciting things that can be done. Uh, so we can discuss uh, them and we will also stake out um, what will happen the weeks after for the selected people and the mentors. So there, the scope of the office hours will be uh, much closer, uh, uh, closed uh, for, the, for the people. People are interested to listen and see what's happening. They're welcome. We're working uh, uh, in the open. So these are the uh, general announcements. Now uh, I, I, we have, or I have some more unpleasant uh, comments uh, to do. And there were some, some discussions and, and complaints uh, earlier this week. And I would like to come back on that and clarify uh, a couple of things. The first and, and most annoying thing for me was there were some uh, precise complaints about comment bullying. Uh, what I call uh, with that are uh, people that anonymously uh, put comments on documents that are useless or rude or even uh, suggest uh, very uh, unpleasant things like saying or um, implying that the uh, 
the, the proposal is useless and should be uh, removed. I call that bullying. Some people might see it as just a prank. Um, I personally don't, and we as org admin and as organization don't see it that way. It's an in, inappropriate behavior. Uh, and um, especially, now I hope I will not do uh, hurt somebody, but as it was uh, aimed at Sonali, who is a young lady, if I'm not mistaken, uh, which makes it even worse. So um, it's not acceptable, it is disrespectful, it's not in the spirit of open source, and it's not an adult behavior. Full stop. There is no other comments on that. This is not acceptable, especially as that we as a community follow uh, the Jenkins Code of Conduct, which is really very important guiding principle. Uh, and uh, in everything that's doing with uh, our external communication, Elisa is somewhere the, 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 the owner and can really explain very well uh, what this Jenkins Code of Conduct is. And so, Elisa, if you could clarify that with, uh, with us. Yeah. Um, so as John Mark mentioned, the the code of conduct is our guidance into um, the Jenkins community's cultures, our, our value and our philosophy. So I put a link in the chat window and um, I'm going to try to share my screen with you so that I can. Mark, you need to... Okay. There it works. I'm sharing my screen. So um, just to make sure that there's no misrepresentation or any misunderstanding, I'm going to read or briefly read our code of conduct just so that hopefully when you hear it, it'll, you know, it, it absorbs better. So Jenkins code of conduct as community members, contributors, and maintainers of this project and in the interest of fostering an open and welcoming community, we commit to respect all people who participate in the community through reporting issues, posting feature requests, updating documentation, submitting pull requests or patches, and other activities. Our pledge, as we as members, contributors, and leaders, pledge to make participation in our community a harassment-free experience for everyone, regardless of age, body size, visible or invisible disability, ethnicity, sex characteristics, gender identity, and expression level of experience, education, socioeconomic status, nationality, personal appearance, race, religion, or sexual identity and orientation. We pledge to act and interact in ways that contribute to an open, welcoming, diverse, inclusive, and healthy community. Um, our standards, examples of behavior that contributes to a positive environment of our community include demonstrating empathy and kindness toward other people, being respectful of different opinions, viewpoints, and experiences, giving and gracefully accepting constructive feedback, accepting responsibility and apologizing to those affected by our mistakes and learning from the experience. Focusing on what is best, not just for us as individual, individuals, but for the overall community. Accept unacceptable behaviors include use of sexualized language or imagery and sexual attention or advances of any kind, trolling, insulting, or derogatory comments, and personal or political attacks, public or private harassment, publishing others' private information such as physical or email address without their explicit permission. Other conduct, which include reasonably 
be, which could reasonably be considered inappropriate in a professional setting. So I know that this is a probably a lot of things to digest, but just the bare basic foundation is to take away from this is be kind to each other, respect each other, and help each other out. Um, that's how our community grows. That's what our values are as a community because we want to make this a welcoming um, and diversified community for everybody. So hope that yeah. helps. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Alyssa, uh, for this uh, this reminder. And this is part of the open source experience and what we want to teach. Now, this is very serious to us. Uh, we have here in this meeting two members of the bo the Jenkins board, uh, Alexander and Mark Waite, uh, who look and follow uh, what we do and uh, might take. Uh, um, uh, actions. Now, practically, uh, we cannot defend the system from uh, 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 defacing or or these kind of uh, comments, comments bullying, which happens uh, quite not quite often, but happens regularly, uh, because of the way Google Form, uh, Google Doc, uh, Google Doc is configured. Uh, and because we want to be as open as possible, we give the opportunity to anyone to add comments. And this is something we feel is important. Uh, we, if we want to require people and only nomin nominal peoples to be able to do comments there, we'll go against the flow against the spirit of openness of what we do. So um, we want and we, we remind, and we, we've been very strong here in reminding what is uh, the open source code of conduct or the one we use here uh, at Jenkins. If these type of behaviors uh, continue, uh, we might have to use then what I call or Mark called the nuclear weapon uh, and then force closed comments uh, that we we'll have to maintain who are the people who are able to do the comments and all the comments are signed and uh, logged. I would be very, very disappointed uh, by that because that would mean that I failed in my work as mentoring this uh, this community or this uh, this group of people. So I trust you um, uh, with that. I have the same comment to do about um, review comments closing. Uh, I've seen, uh, and we, we all have seen that uh, either uh, logged in people or anonymous uh, people found it very funny to close comments so that they're not seen uh, anymore by other people or by the, the author. Uh, it's easy to do, it's fun, it's, it's you're just annoying people uh, doing that. No, it, it has an impact. Uh, and don't do that. Only the author uh, of the, the comment or the author of the document uh, are allowed to um, close a comment. Behave well. Uh, it, it's 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 like uh, well, I have several examples in my mind. But uh, when you're in a community, when you're together, uh, don't uh, don't just grab the food in somebody else's plate. Just behave. Mark, you wanted to add something, or saw you There's making a sign. Any any one of the any one of the candidates is welcome to choose if they if they wish to disallow anonymous review, and then assign specific people to review. I believe you each have access to our email addresses, so if you need to, you are welcome to assign. I, I'll give you mine. I'm Mark at gmail .com. And you are welcome to assign specific reviewers that will assure you that you don't get anonymous comments. 
And anonymous, not getting anonymous comments means you also won't have anonymous people closing review comments. That seems to be the only compromise we can make with the Google Docs use model. Now the the next uh, topic, and then we're we're open uh, the dis the 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 floor for uh, questions and uh, discussions. Um, there were also complaints and discussions about copying, cheating, and um, behaviors that were not uh, not expected. Now, I have a couple of comments uh, on that, and I will let then the other uh, uh, lead mentors um, add their own comments. Here, we have a crowd of people. So we have a lot of people that are presenting, competing, I need to accept that, on a limited number of project ideas. You've seen the number of drafts that have been uh, written. So. That means that a jolting, squashing, and so is expected. But there is something stronger behind the whole discussion. The way we work in open source, the way the spirit of what we want to do and the spirit behind Google Summer of Code is that we also want to encourage sharing of ideas. And so the complete process of building and growing in, on these various ideas is normal, expected, and could be encouraged. That What is not acceptable or not, uh, and, and here we're all playing with nuances, gray zone, so there's no rules that can be followed by a judge and uh, no. Where it becomes where this sharing of idea co of goodwill community working together uh, is definitely discussable, uh, discussable is when we see text that has been copied and where this is obvious plagiarism. And this will be detected. This is, these are the kind of things that mentors are looking for. So copying, cheating, or these, these kind of things is not relevant at this phase of uh, the, uh, the process of building uh, the, the proposal. And uh, in the Gitter channel, there was also reference to rules from uh, Google Summer of Code. And uh, I didn't want to get into that debate uh, on the Gitter channel. These rules apply for uh, the possible exclusion of selected GSOC contributors and that get paid. And this is that, for instance, using other people's codes without attributing it or these kind of, which is there, it's stealing other people's work. At this stage here, we were more in sharing, exploring ideas. It can be seen as somebody stealing my, my work, my ideas, and this is unfair. And this is difficult to understand, and this is difficult, and, and it's part of the experience, and these are the kind of things we wanted to share with you or make you experience. This working together and making these, these ideas uh, 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 grow. You have been used and you might be in very competitive environments where this corporation sharing ideas make them grow. And hey, I worked all these, these and somebody else's use it. In open source, it is normal. It's the way it works. You just attribute, you build, or this is done in a friendly way. In other circles, you have a knife between your teeth and you're going to kill the other one and, and this is the rat race. 
Uh, my personal opinion, I don't want to be part of any rat race uh, that way, but here, there's another choice. I know uh, the world is not as simple as I uh, I wished it, but so this is this is important. Now it's it's gray. Uh, it's and there are very mixed feelings about that. And I can understand, especially if uh, it comes together with very intimidating behaviors like these this commenting. And there we're very strict. This is definitely a no no. And if you add this impression, oh, somebody else has been stealing, and and I hear this is not what we're talking about. This, and I, I used the expression before. Remember, with GSOC, it's not the goal, the destination that's important. Being selected and having my name there on the on uh, on on the the starry sky. It's the way. It's a complete process. Look behind you, all those that participated up to now, and look at what you already learned. Only a few will be selected. And, and I, I want also to be very, very honest. Uh, we made our calculation. There will be only four people selected in all, all the crowd that has been uh, uh, uh participating to that but not being selected does not mean that first you failed anything and that you didn't learn anything and that the road is now finished not at all and this is something we can we can discuss in a in another in another phase I uh, just want to conclude uh, uh, that part. So two things. First, trust the mentors. The mentors will evaluate uh, the uh, uh, proposals. And I'm just going to remind uh, what are the criteria that I refreshed all the mentors that uh, uh, and, and joined them. They keep these in mind when you grade uh the proposals so is it a clear and well-defined proposal must is the applicant uh, does he have enough skills and experience to quickly hit the ground running applicants has completed contributions to the project prior to submission and attended office hours these are evidence of his commitment to the project and understanding how our community works. The applicant has demonstrated adequate communication skills with his submissions, his interactions on forms or Gitter on PR conversations. Applicant has the right stuff to complete successfully his described GSOC project. So it is globally the uh, and it's not only putting a mark, there will be also an open discussion on all the, uh, uh, the, the proposal. So the last thing, and I conclude my part uh, on that and give the word to other uh, mentors uh, there, there will be no exclusions based on article X, Y, Z, and so on. If we have, uh, evidence or that for some reasons someone obviously cheated because he copied parts of text we will see it and we'll just not select the proposal full stop and so I we're going to leave that discussion that was uh, raised by two of you um, and we'll leave it there now the last point I'm going to say thank you to have raised these points and concerns. Thank you to have reached out uh, to uh, uh, to the org admins to explicitly say what your concerns are. We take it seriously and we gave you the, the answer about that. Now, who would like to add uh, something to what I to what I said? Otherwise, we move on to open or more general uh, questions. Mark, Alex, or so. 
or was I that boring that nobody has comment? Not okay. boring, just very complete. But yeah, I agree okay. with you, so Mark, that is definitely an important topic. And thanks for elaborating that that in detail. Thank you, Alex. Uh, leave the mic open for a couple of seconds, and then I'll we can start uh, taking questions from the audience. There was a question raised by by Mahmoud uh, regarding: Hey, is four pull requests enough? It's a fun topic because. Um, almost always in software development, asking is number enough, we'll, we'll get a, a completely ambiguous answer because we rarely can successfully count things in an intellectual prop, intellectual effort and decide if it's good or not. Uh, we certainly do review um, pull requests as part of the review process. The most important thing is your proposal, not your pull request, it's your proposal. Make a good proposal, but know that we will look at your contributions in other ways as well. I, we don't, we have full range of things we can evaluate. We can look at your public history on GitHub. We can look at pull requests you've submitted. We can look at comments in chat channels. Those things are all viable and can help us as we try to make our best decision. Again, proposal is the most crucial thing. I agree with you. Does, was a question for Mahmoud? Uh, just it was this, yeah okay i hope this was answered no i have a problem scrolling through all that Can oh, dear, and i it? have hit my time limit john mark i apologize i need okay. to give control of the session to uh i'm going to hand off to Alyssa so that she becomes yeah. the uh the host yep yeah. that's fine mark great thank, thank you thank you very much for joining thank mark and for your participation okay bye thank you bye, bye. So what else do we have as question? I lost track here. I don't see any other questions for the time being. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, here I see. Oh, uh, Mukul, you have a question for me. If you're still there, yes. Back, you have said that uh, for the Android project, uh, like you want something that is on the left part, uh, left part of the pipeline. So uh, what I have proposed is like uh, basically adding few stages to the pipeline and, mm -hmm. and uh, few things like uh, you wanted on your uh, few things you have raised on your issues on GitHub on that repository, uh, building Jenkins and few things like uh, that you have mentioned on the project piece, like you want to build, uh, you want to have multiple uh, emulators or something like that. Uh, yep. So, so I have proposed that. Uh, is this enough, or uh, do you want to like add something more that I can look into before submitting my proposal? I would like to hear about your ideas. Um, mine are okay, but yours are way better. I'm, that's for sure. Way so better. I won't tell you what kind of ideas you should have. Just. Propose them if you have some, and we'll evaluate them later on. This is very, very true. Did you understand that, Mukul? Okay, okay, I understand. Here, I know it's a difficult exercise, and and here you you're not at the school assignment where the teacher said, "I want you to do that," or if you're working for a boss. Here. We want to, to see your creativity and how autonomous uh, you are. So come with ideas, come with and be the sky the limit. Okay. <laughs> and uh, 175 yeah. hours also are part of the limit. Yeah. Mukul, go ahead. Uh, I mean, uh, you said like, my question is, you said that you want something on the left. What does that signify? Like left part of the uh, that means left part of uh, pipeline or something like that. You said uh, two weeks back on the GSOC mm -hmm. office hour. So my question is, what 
is that that left part would you, uh, can you... what was your suggestion yeah. oh yeah but i think i think i wanted to say that um for android or mobile applications uh generally you don't want the end user to discover that something is not going well with that app you know we want to try to catch all the errors before the application goes to production so what i think i meant when i said shift left is... shift left yeah shift left so try to catch all the errors all the code flows all the things that uh, could make the application um, a better quality application so that end user won't have to face strange issues errors and so on so that's what i meant so of course um static analysis unit testing uh, of course instrumented testing but if you have any other ideas that could ameliorate the code, like for example, uh, dependency checkers, linters, whatever uh, you have experience with, go ahead and propose. Uh, the goal is to have the best quality application possible, even if it's an empty application to start with. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was a... Yeah, go ahead. Um, I hope you're having a great time. I just wanted to say thank you for clearing everything out thing. And I have something to dis uh, discuss related with my proposal. Can I okay. go ahead? Um, I was thinking, um, like I can maybe add a default user because we want a quick start for the Jenkins and I think it will help them out if they have the tutorials as a default user and all the plugins are already installed and they just want to like spin their hands around. So is it a good idea? Yes. The, the, I, I think your your gut feeling uh, is, is good and um, the quick start should have enough components pre-configured so that uh, the person who tries it out has everything uh, uh, the minimal required uh, to do yes uh, or, uh, to, to, so uh, using uh, Jenkins configuration as code to configure uh, as much as possible uh, uh, for instance for me is is a must for uh, 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 this project. Yeah, I, I think there's different tutorials available even in the documentation, like getting started with the Java Mavens and even Gradle. So I think I can add different uh, plugins just for using that. So yes, so there, thank you for answering. To have a, uh, exactly. So to have a good handful of, uh, uh, of plugins uh, that that people generally used or are interested in. The purpose of, of it is that they have enough to get a good impression of what Jenkins does. So you're on exactly on the right direction. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, there was a question from Jack Ruti that has already been answered by Adrian. Uh, we, we, we don't count uh, the the number of times you've been uh, uh, on on the office hours and and so on. So it's so on, we're now the phrasing is is not correct. And I apologize for that. Is these are hints that shows the engagement to the community and how the people understand and interacted with that. And we look at it in a holistic way so uh, uh globally so but uh, the way adrian uh, answered i think so you're you're reassured i guess so that uh, question for bruno uh, adrian had to go okay okay that's good thank you um, last word, I'm going to make a small sales pitch. I'm going to share something that's near to my heart. Uh, some people had their uh, proposal canceled because they were uh, running on a project that was uh, removed. And 
they some of them had a very interesting uh, reaction. I really appreciated uh, that. Uh, they continued working on the idea, the project idea, and submitted uh, pull requests and continue thinking and interacting and were looking in ways uh, 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 to contribute to the com community. Don't forget that Google Summer of Code is a way to enter in that world of open source. Uh, but there are other ways to, to, uh, to explore that world. And the last comment I'd like to do, especially for young professionals or people that are still studying, open source is a wonderful school to learn more than just what your teachers tell you. They only teach you a very little part of the real stuff. And the real stuff, you'll learn it by gaining experience and exploring it uh, with, uh, with open source. So Google Summer of Code is not the end of the road. And we've seen some very positive uh, uh, attitudes and, and this makes me happy to see that these people understood the message that was behind all the efforts uh, that we were doing here. So these are my final comments. So uh, we're now slowly reaching uh, the top of the hour. We have still quarter of an hour. Uh, if there are questions, comments, or somebody wants to comment about football match, don't, I don't raise that subject with Alexander. Why oh, is uh, not following football? I have Go something ahead. to. I have something to ask. Uh, how much help we can expect from mentors during the GSOC period, during the contribution period? So when, when during the actual contribution, so if you're selected, is that a question? Yes. yes. So the a contributor that is selected, uh, so we estimate the time spent by mentor to uh, eight, between six and 10 hours a week work together uh, uh, or reviewing document or interaction. So it's a very high level of interaction. So it's it's really a platinum level of coaching uh, that you get with, yeah, it's, it's but um, you get a very high uh, support for that. It starts in, uh, in June with a bonding period, no, in May with the bonding period. And then during the whole summer, there's a, a heavy interaction between mentors. Uh, and this is also why we have limited the number of projects we can take because the involvement of mentors is very high during that period. Did that answer your question? Uh, so that includes like code review, uh, from code review to one-to-one -to -one, uh, meet, and everything oh, yeah. or oh yeah Oof. code reviews every code that you're going to submit will work as pull request in layers and will be reviewed and will be discussed uh there will be one-on-ones uh i will i will insist uh that we have once a week uh this office hour so mentors and candidates uh, or contributor together uh, as some kind of a stand-up where uh, everybody is, will explain what is his progress, uh, what are his concerns, what are the impediments and share the progress uh, so that we, we're building a community uh, and we work uh, together. So it's a really a high intensity involvement of everybody. And not only per project, I want to have it globally, uh, all the four projects. I, I would have loved to have more projects, believe me, believe me. I've been crying to have uh, help. But uh, on the other side, I don't want to stretch the resources we have because I want to be sure that we have successful uh, projects. And you see, you hear that the involvement is, is high. 
Okay. Other um, questions? Uh, is coming? there any way I can contact with my project mentor who is Pervianto? And because he's not uh, really present in the office hours, and I just want to discuss some ideas with him and if it's feasible to add in the proposal. Um, which project uh, are you working on? I'm working on the um, quick start. I think Bruno is the lead mentor now. Bruno is the lead mentor there. Yeah, I just wanted to say. I'm one of the mentors, potential mentors. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. So is it okay? Now, generally, I prefer that uh, the questions are raised uh, through the Gitter channel or publicly. But now we're slowly running out of time. Uh... What what is the best way to reach Bruno? To monitor the Gitter channel, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I'm kind of overwhelmed by the amount of uh, uh, community.jenkins.io is something I read more often than Gitter. And you receive a notification by mail or yeah yeah. Anyway, anyway Sonali, use the community.jenkins.io and and so make it public, but you put uh, Bruno. In, oh uh, yes, uh, and my handle on community is <laughs> not Bruno, it's Podang, as I wrote in the comments, in the chat. Which is the name of a French pastry, so you know everything. Yes, <laughs> that makes it okay. easy to remember. Well, when you know <laughs> what it foodies. is and when you, have tasted, <laughs> when you have tasted it, so you remember it. But it was a time where Android was coming with uh, cookie names for their version numbers. Yeah. Well, okay, then the, the next version is going to be that French pastry. Right? Is the story right? Yeah, you're right. Except that, yes, we didn't get Podang. What did we get, by the way? It was a P something. Mm, whatever. I remember. Never. Here, other questions or points to raise? Now, I wish you success. I wish the mentors, uh, so to us, a lot of courage because this will be the last preparation office hour. So remember, I'll open the channel uh, the coming weeks just if somebody is around. Uh, and because we'll be actively be working on the uh, grading and selection process. Enjoy the break. Uh, hope to see you around and uh, wishing everybody the best. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. We can close now. Lisa, okay. you have yep. the keys. You need to turn off the lights. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody.